Uh, we actually left Texas uh, four and a half, five years ago for the opportunity to own a Chick-fil-A. Um, I'm a mechanical engineer by degree, which is kind of interesting. People always wonder how in the world you got from engineering to uh, owning a Chick-fil-A. And really it was just, for me, it was about entrepreneurship. I wanted to own my own business at one point. And throughout my career, I found myself getting further and further away from engineering and uh, more on the customer service and business side of things. And uh, about five or six years ago, I pursued the, uh, the opportunity to own a Chick-fil-A. And uh, I started off in Chicago with a store there because that's actually where my wife's from. And they wanted us to be somewhat near family. And uh, I think the Lord meant for us to be here because about halfway through that first year, I got a call from our corporate office and said, hey, we're going to build one in Troy, Ohio. And because we like people to uh, own stores in areas where they have family, where they have ties to the community, we, we did a search and of the 2000 and some owners that were within Chick-fil-A. I was the only one from Troy. <laughs> so uh, they called and asked if I'd be willing to move. And I was thrilled uh, to have the opportunity to come home and, and be here again in Ohio. So I said yes. And they built the store, which took longer than I think anybody would have liked. I got a lot of uh, phone calls and emails during the process going, what in the world is taking so long? And when are you guys going to open? And uh, finally, it happened. Uh, January of 2017, uh, we opened. And so we're in our we're going in our fifth year right now, and it's been uh, phenomenal. We've uh, really enjoyed it, and it's gone really well. By the way, if you see me uh, distracted looking to my right at any point during this video, I've got a Labrador that doesn't understand I'm on a Zoom call, and he wants to play fetch right now, so he keeps bringing me his ball and I'm trying to push him away. Um, so anyway, that's that's a little bit of facts about me. Uh, my, I'm married to my wife, Ann. We've been married uh, over 25 years. Uh, we have four children. Our oldest, uh, Brian, uh, just graduated Baylor University, and he's going to live in Texas and be an accountant. Uh, we have a son, Benjamin, that was a senior at Tip City, uh, just graduated. He's going to go to college and play basketball at Lehigh in uh, Pennsylvania. And then we also have two daughters. Our, uh, our youngest is uh, attending Miami East right now, as a matter of fact, because we just moved. And uh, so she'll be in kindergarten. So we have quite a spectrum. That's our family. Um, the store itself, as I said, we opened in uh, January of 2017. So we're in our fifth year and it's been phenomenal. We've, uh, they have projections for how stores are going to do. And because Troy is a little more rural, they projected us to do you know, below average for what normal Chick-fil-A's do. And we've actually exceeded expectations every year. Some years we've grown as much as 30, 35%, which is incredible in the uh, food industry. And uh, it, it really is a, a product of the employees that we have. Uh, we've been so blessed. We have phenomenal, for any of you that have ever gone there and gone through there, we just have phenomenal employees that work there that are caring and loving and, uh, and do a fantastic job. And uh, my job is to just kind of hold all that together and keep it from going off the rails. We've actually gotten to the point uh, where we have 100 employees. Uh, Shelby and I were talking about that before the call started. The big question everybody seems to have these days is uh, when is the dining room going to open? And uh, I would love to open it today if I could. The things that are holding us back is um, all the, uh, the government mandates right now around masks and everything. Um, we wear masks as we work day in and day out, but having to manage that with uh, customers that come in and be the, uh, the mask police and uh, just dealing with everything that goes along with that. Plus you have to uh, operate at a reduced capacity. And there's just so many restrictions and rules that we've uh, unfortunately not been able to do that. Uh, plus, right now, uh, you know, everybody is struggling to find employees, including us, uh, because of a lot of the government programs right now, people are enticed to uh, stay home and not work. And so we're just struggling to, uh, to find people. But we'll figure out how to overcome that. We've overcome a lot of other things as well. And I'm, I'm confident that the Lord will bring us good people and, and we'll be all right. So today, um, what we wanted to talk about was customer service. So I'm going to talk about it from a, uh, a Chick-fil-A perspective. Um, you guys will hear, I, I, have a, I have a strong faith and um, my family has a strong faith. So you'll hear me reference that quite a bit while we're talking. Um, you know, that, to me, that's one of the biggest things that sets Chick-fil-A apart. Um, there's, a, there's a misconception out there that you have to be, uh, you have to have a faith of some kind to uh, work at Chick-fil-A, which actually couldn't be further from the tooth. We have employees that do, we have employees that don't. Um, 
but I believe for me and for a lot of the restaurant, that's a big reason that we are the way we are is, uh, is our faith and our faith background. Um, not a requirement, but we, we find a lot of people are kind of attracted to that anyway. But in addition to that, a big part of uh, what my employees, I think, are able to do is empathize and really try to go above and beyond and understand people's needs and meet those needs. Um, in Chick-fil-A, we actually call it second mile service. And that, there's a biblical reference to that in the Bible, but basically it's uh, going the second mile or going above and beyond. And, uh, you know, the way that happens in Chick-fil-A is trying to anticipate needs and meet them before people even have to ask about them. For instance, when our dining room is open, we have people that wander the dining room uh, looking to see if people need anything before they can even ask. Like at a lot of restaurants, you have to take your drink up to the counter and say, hey, I want a refill. We try to find that ahead of time and say, you know, who looks like they're halfway through their meal? I'll bet they probably need something more to drink. And the employees are encouraged to go and ask them ahead of time, can I get you something to drink? Which for people that haven't been in our restaurant before, uh, that always seems to surprise them. And for us, it's just sort of an expectation. And that's just one example. Um, but in terms of giving grace and empathizing with people, there's a video that Chick-fil-A uh, has that we use when people are going through our orientation that um, it kind of sets the tone for it. And I'd like to share that video with you guys real quick. And you'll have to forgive me. I was also explaining that I don't do Zoom calls a lot. And so I'm not real experienced at it, but I think we'll be able to make it work here. Let me try to pull it up. There we go. All right. Do I want to press stop share now? Yep. All right. There we go. Am I back? You're back. Okay, great. Sorry about that, guys. Apologize for the technical difficulties there. Um, but anyway, that's a video that we show. I hope everybody was able to kind of see it and hear it. Um, it was mostly just music in the background anyway. But the whole point of that is, is recognition that Everybody that comes into our restaurant, whether it's an employee or a, uh, a customer, has a story. And on any given day, somebody could be having a great day, somebody could be having a bad day. 
But the whole point is, is to give people grace and uh, not always just jump to conclusions. You know, we have through our restaurant, we have people that the vast majority of the people that come to our restaurant are nice and kind. Uh, but there is always that small percentage of people that are not kind that, you know, are kind of rude, uh, maybe, you know, treat people in a way that they shouldn't be treated. And it's hard for people to not react in a negative way to that. And that's one of the things we try to train and talk to our employees about is give people the benefit of the doubt, believe the best about them, because you never know when somebody's coming through the restaurant. Somebody may be coming from a funeral home. They just, you know, had to bury somebody in their family or maybe they were at the doctor and they received terrible news that they weren't ready for. And, you know, I don't think people deliberately take it out on other people when that happens, but we all know that that's just sort of the human condition and it's kind of hard not to do that. So we try really hard to not take it personally when people react or, or talk in that way. And it's the same way with my employees, with one another, you know, a hundred people working in the restaurant, we don't have a hundred in there at the same time, but on any given shift, we may have 30, 30 some people in our restaurant working and they're going to rub each other the wrong way. And it's, you know, it's, it's a high pressure job. You're trying to do a lot of different things at once. You're trying to get people through really quickly. Uh, you're trying to make sure they get the highest quality. You're trying to treat them with kindness. And, you know, people tend to, you know, you can kind of rub each other the wrong way when that happens. And if you pr mentally prepare yourself ahead of time and think about that and try to always look at it when somebody does do something that irritates you and say, you know what, I bet you they're having a bad day because of something I don't even know about, or even taking the time to ask them, you know, what's going on with you? You're not acting like your normal self today as an employee or just as a customer, giving them a smile anyway, even though they may not deserve one, the way they're treating you. Um, if you start off that way, you'd be surprised how often that can change people's moods. And we've had a lot of customers that have come through that even even come back at a later time and said, you know, I was having a terrible day, but coming there, you know, for whatever reason, it changed everything. You know, th this employee was kind to me or they smiled at me and or they did this for me that I wasn't expecting. It turned their day around and made it a lot better. And those are the kind of stories that when you hear or when the employees hear, um, it, it makes them realize that what they're doing is really important. And it, it causes them to continue to want to act that way or even go beyond above and beyond that. And I think with uh, Chick-fil-A in particular, that's it's kind of people always ask, what's the secret sauce? And there's a couple different things that happen. But one of them is, is I think we find a way to bring the best out in people. Everybody has the capacity within them to be that kind of person, you know, to be the best sort of person that in turn brings out the best in other people. But it's something you got to kind of work at. It doesn't just happen naturally. And to be honest, most of us, most people, I think, don't feel like being that way most of the time. But we're really good at trying to bring that out in people. And when a certain group in the restaurant are doing it, it's sort of like, um, what is it? You know, ships will raise one another up. As you raise the water level, all the ships will come up with it. I'm not saying that the right way. But you get the idea is we kind of feed off of one another. And when we see somebody else doing it, then we're all able to do it as well. But I think it all starts with giving people grace and uh, trying to empathize with others and see it from their point of view. If you can see it from their point of view, I think that makes a big difference. And I think that's one of the keys to uh, good customer service. Now, that being said, um, you know, I've said there are some uh, customers that, you know, from time to time, you know, maybe don't treat my employees right. A lot of people are shocked to hear that uh, there, there's actually been three or four instances where I've had to fire a customer. And that sounds really funny, but um, my job is also to protect my employees. And there's been time, there's been a couple times where employees are just so over the top, crazy, nasty to employees that I've had to stop them on the spot and say, hey, look, you know, you can't talk to them that way. You can't treat them that way. And quite frankly, until you learn how to behave a little better, you, you can't come back. And it always stuns them. They're like, wait a minute, I'm the customer. You can't say that to me. And I'm like, you know, I, I'm not enjoying doing it, but I very much can say that to you because my employees also have to feel like I have their back. If I've got their back, then they're going to do what I'm asking them to do, which is give incredible, you know, customer service. And they need to know that I'm going to take care of them as well. And I don't, I don't ever like going to that, but I always, I always let people know that sometimes it comes down to that, and uh, not very often. 
but that that's a big part of it. I think in, in, if you want your employees to give exceptional customer service, then number one, you've got to treat them the right way. And you've got, they've got to know that you're going to be there for them when they need you. And, uh, you know, treating people the right way, that's part of what I think makes Chick-fil-A different as well is, you know, we, we try to be as accommodating as we can with them. You know, when we're scheduling, we schedule them from week to week rather than weeks in advance because that allows them to have, you know, they've got doctor's appointments. There's things that pop up that they're not, you know, always aware of well in advance. And by working with them on that, again, they appreciate that. Most of them at my restaurant are like, I've never had this before. I've never, you know, had you had anybody work with me like this before and, and work around me. And it's like, well, it's because you're important. I mean, we, it's one thing to say that somebody's important. And it's another thing that, you know, when push comes to shove, you actually treat them like they're important. And uh, I actually, you know, I don't like it when things happen to them, but I do appreciate the fact that we have the opportunity to prove to them that, hey, we didn't just talk about this in the interview to try to get you to come work here, to try to convince you. We're going to show you right now that this is who we are and what we're about. And we all know that there's things that happen. Children get sick. Um, people get sick. Uh, things happen where people can't be there. And I've had so many employees go, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. And I'm like, well, I appreciate that. But you know what? That's what we're here for is to work with you and work around you. Um, another thing we do is we try to, you know, we, we, we tell everybody at the restaurant that they're part of the family and we treat them like they're family. We, we don't just ask them about how their day went at work, but we want to know how things are going in their personal lives. You know, how's their family doing? What's happening? What's happening there? What's going well? What's not going well? Um, going above and beyond, going the second mile and trying to help them in their personal lives as well. Um, again, I enjoy the opportunities. I can't tell you how many flat tires I've gone and changed and not just because they're on the way to work. Sometimes it's people on their way somewhere else nothing to do with work. I've done it on a Sunday before. You'd be surprised how many kids work at my restaurant that don't know how to change a tire on their car and or they're afraid to call mom or dad because they just don't want to admit that something happened. But things like that, uh, you know, we've had employees that have had things happen in their life that uh, were difficult for them. And there's a group of people that will always step up and we'll go and maybe we'll mow somebody's yard for them for a couple weeks. We've done that, um, you know, food chains, that kind of thing. I think when you treat your employees that way and truly treat them like family, again, you treat them well and they're gonna turn around and they're gonna treat your customers well as well. So that's that's a big part of it. Um, one of the things that we train our employees for, and I, I'll jump around here a little bit. And by the way, anytime you guys have a question, feel free to throw it up on the chat. Um, I'm happy to answer them and uh, happy to address it as we go along, but I'll also at the end of uh, the talk here, you know, make time to do that as well. Um, one of the things we train all of our employees on is what we call the core four, uh, the core, you know, just the most basic things that you have to do in the restaurant at any given time. And uh, we, we kind of make them uh, go through this. It's, it's a visual thing. And the first time they do it, they're like, oh, this is the goofiest thing ever. But it helps them remember what they're supposed to be doing. And we always tell them when a customer comes in or they come to the window or you're taking their order out in the drive through or whatever, uh, the first thing you have to do is make eye contact. So I make them stand there in the, uh, you know, when we're training them, they have to stand there and point to their eyes and say, okay, make eye contact. That's the first thing. The second thing is share a smile. And like I said earlier, if you smile at somebody, you'd be shocked. It's really hard, even if they're having a bad day for them not to smile back at you. Um, people have done it, but for the most part, it happens. So make eye contact, share a smile, uh, speak enthusiastically. Um, how you speak to somebody makes all the difference in the world. You know, if you're just there going through the road, you know, hi, can I take your order? You know, that's not going to make anybody excited. But if it's like, hey, how are you doing? I'm glad you came today. Um, what can I get for you today? You know, and it's, it's all in how the, the delivery and how you speak it. And it's important to do that consistently. So that was the third one, speak enthusiastically. And the last one is stay connected. Um, we, you know, we're trying to get people through the restaurant quickly, but we also want to, you know, show the human side of it. Uh, one of the things we love the most is when somebody comes through with a dog. <laughs> Everybody at our restaurant loves dogs. And it's okay for somebody to say, man, I love your dog. What a cute dog. And we actually keep a big thing. Those of you that have dogs and have come through, you probably know this. We keep a big thing of dog biscuits behind the counter. And every dog that comes through the uh, drive-thru gets a biscuit. And whenever they're out in the parking lot, we try to do that as well. 
And that's just one way that we try to stay connected with somebody, you know, give them a compliment, you know, comment on whatever it is you see that you think is kind of neat. Again, you know, you can't have a, a five minute conversation because everybody behind them in line is not going to appreciate that. But, you know, a quick comment of this, that, of recognizing something is, is, is a great way to do it. So those are the core four. So again, you know, those of you at home, this is something you can do with your employees uh, and go through it with your, your hands. Uh, make eye contact, uh, share a smile, speak enthusiastically, and then uh, stay connected. So, you know, it's important. I think a lot of you in your business probably have this, but it's real important that everybody's on the same page with uh, mission and vision and all of that. And if you haven't written it down, you know, if you're like, oh, everybody here kind of understands, you know, what our mission is, you know, we're here to make people happier, this or that. I think you really need to sit down and think about it and write it down. And, uh, you know, Chick-fil-A has got a couple. We've got um, a, a, what we call our corporate goal, which is to become the world's most caring organization. And that can mean a lot of things to a lot of people. And it's kind of neat to be able to explore that and say, okay, how can we be caring and just sit down and have a discussion with the employees about that? Say, what does it mean to you to be caring? And uh, sometimes they'll talk about things we can do for the customer. Uh, just as often, they'll talk about a lot of things that I can do for them, which is fine. I want to hear about it. How can I be more caring for you guys? And as we talk about it, I write them down. And, uh, you know, the fact that I'm listening enough to actually write it down. And then the, the most important thing would be actually following up what they, uh, what they tell me about how I can care for them. Um, if I actually follow up and do it again, they're like, we've never had this. We don't get this at other places. And I'm like, well, again, we, we're not going to just say we're going to do it. We're going to do it. You know, just some examples, uh, my employees, since we don't have our dining room open right now, uh, we put together a snack stand for them. Um, and every day we put candy out. Well, we started just putting candy out and then I got, you know, to realize I'm not really doing them a whole lot of favors with that. So I still offer the candy, but we also bring in like oranges and apples. And of course they sit there and gather dust and the candy goes first, but they at least have the option uh, to do that. Um, another thing somebody asked, they thought they were asking for the moon or the stars. They said, hey, could I get a, a I'm gonna mispronounce this, but a Keurig, you know, a little coffee maker. A lot of them were right next to uh, Starbucks and nothing wrong with Starbucks, except for, uh, you know, a lot of my people send, tend to spend a lot of their money at Starbucks. And if, if there's a Starbucks owner here, I'm not trying to stop that. I think that's great. Uh, but, you know, knowing that things can be tight for some of my employees, I thought, hey, that's great. Of course we can do a Keurig. So we bought a Keurig and I supply the little pods for them. And they still go and get their treat because there's no comparing Starbucks to a Keurig. I get that. But if they're just really needing that caffeine fix to get through the, uh, through the day, they can save a few bucks and go ahead and do that. And so just, you know, they thought it was a crazy uh, request. And I was like, that's not so crazy. I don't mind doing that for you. That's actually really easy. And uh, so I think asking them those kind of questions and then following through is a big part. You know, that's taking care of your employees, but I guarantee you that is going to translate into your employees taking care of your customers. Take care of the employees, they'll take care of the customers. Um, Chick-fil-A's corporate mission, we talked about the goal, but the corporate mission is um, to glorify God by being a faithful steward of all that is entrusted to us and to have a positive influence on all that come into contact with Chick-fil-A. So that's one thing I ask all my employees to do is number one, memorize that, but I want more than just memorization. We talk about it all the time. What does it mean to be a faithful steward? Some of them didn't know what the word steward meant. So we talked about that first, but what does it mean to be a good steward? Well, it means to take care of, uh, you know, not be wasteful of things, but also to use everything and maximize everything that we've been given and blessed with. And then to have a positive influence on all that come into contact with Chick-fil-A, that, you know, that means not only customers, obviously it means customers, but also one another, taking good care of one another and being a positive influence on each other. So having that mission statement out there, I've got it on a, somebody made a really nice plaque of it for me. And we've got it right up there above our manager stand where everybody can see it. And uh, it's not uncommon for me to walk through and ask somebody, what's our corporate mission statement? And I, I don't want just the memorization. They'll tell me most times what it is, but then I'll ask them what it means to them. 
And uh, that's a big important part of it. And then I'll go beyond that and say, well, how did you demonstrate that today? And, uh, you know, when I first started doing that, they had to think about it a little bit and they didn't always have an answer. And now almost everybody has an answer when I ask them that. Um, and then, so that was our corporate mission, but then the Troy Chick-fil-A, you know, I kind of took it another step. That's fine. Every Chick-fil-A does that. What are we going to do differently in Troy? So our mission and our store is to inspire people to take good care of each other, both inside and outside of the restaurant, serving one another with honor, dignity, and respect. And, uh, if you've ever, if you know anybody that works for me, that's one of the things that I'll talk about time and time again is honor dignity and respect. If you can get those three things right when you talk to people um, or interact with people, you're, you're probably never going to fail. Um, you know, anytime people have a maybe a heated discussion with one another um, in the restaurant or heaven forbid with a customer, I'll ask them right off. You know, I, I won't address exactly what happened. I'll just say, did you handle that with honor, dignity and respect? And right away, they'll be like, no, no, I guess I didn't. I'm like, all right, so how would you have said that or how could you have said that or gone through that in a way that, you know, presents honor, dignity and respect to that person? And it, it causes them to think about it. And, you know, we all make mistakes. We all have bad days. And when they do, that's fine. But then we correct it and talk about, OK, next time you encounter this, how are you going to handle it differently? What are you going to do differently? So we try not to make the same mistake twice. And a lot of them uh, get on board with that. And, uh, and do that well. So, you know, as I've kind of said, treating the customer right and making them feel loved starts with treating your employees right and making them feel loved. I'm sure a lot of people, when they talk about customer service, they talk about what they do with the customer. And I think that's fine, but I think it starts with the employee. And one thing I always like to, uh, to show people uh, when we're doing their orientation is our org chart at the restaurant. And we have a typical org chart, you know, I'm the owner. Um, I have managers that, you know, are in charge of the store, run the store for me. And we have shift leads that, you know, really are the ones that do the day-to-day, -day, get everything done. And then we have the team members that are at each of the positions in the store. And I, you know, I kind of draw it out for them on a piece of paper and say, this is kind of what our org chart looks like. And I said, but there's one big difference here. And they're like, what? And I take it and, you know, the typical org chart has the owner at the top. I always take the paper and I turn it upside down and I say, this is our org chart. The most important person in our restaurant is the team member because the team member is the one talking directly to the customer and interacting with the customer. The next important person is our shift leads. And I tell the shift leads, the only reason you are here and have a job is to support those team members and make sure they have what they need, everything they need, whether it's training, or whether we've scheduled them the right way, or we're caring for them as an individual, if something's going on in their life that they need help with. The, uh, the shift lead, I, I tell them, your whole purpose in life is to support those team members and get them what they need and take care of them. Same thing with the managers. You know, the managers are here to support the, the shift leads and the team members. And ultimately I tell them, I say, I'm the owner. And I say, I am by far the least important person in the restaurant. And they're always like, oh, you know, Mr. Doug, that's not true. And I'm like, it is absolutely true. I'm the least important person here. If I didn't show up to work one day, this place would be fine without me. That's how we have to have it set up. And when I come in, I try to show them from a, a standpoint of humility. And I always tell my managers this, if you want to be a manager, you've got to have humility and be able to be willing to do the least important thing, which you would think would be the least important thing in the restaurant. When I come in and I see that things are busy and they're all scrambling around and trying to get things done and get the food out and, and make it and everything. And I see that maybe it's one of those times we're having a surge number of employees, but sometimes you get surges and everybody gets a little stressed. The first thing I'll do is I'll be like, Hey, I'll take out the trash. And they're like, Oh no, no, no. You're, you're the owner. You're not taking out the trash. And I'm like, well, it's either that, or I'm going to go over here and start making sandwiches. Which one do you want me to do? And they're like, no, 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 don't make the sandwiches. And I'm like, yeah, exactly because I wouldn't do it nearly as well as they would. They, you know, they do it day in and day out. They know it well. And, uh, you know, we always laugh about that. I could probably do it, but I'd take me twice as long as them. So I'm like, I'm gonna take out the trash. And I purposely do that uh, almost every day when I come in uh, to do that. You know, and I don't wanna make it to where they're relying on me to do that. Where are like, well, we think Doug comes in about this time, so we'll save the trash up for him. And they don't do that. 
but uh, I, I make sure to make it a point that anything I would ask you to do in the restaurant, I'm going to do myself. And my managers have to be the same way. I've over the over the years I've hired, I've been pretty lucky hiring really good people, but there's been one or two people I've hired in to be a manager, which we make them train for a while. We tell them, you can't just come in and be a manager. You actually have to start off as a team member. You know, we may not, you know, we may pay them a little different because they were a manager somewhere else, but I'm like, you've got to learn every position in the restaurant first and earn the respect of everybody in the restaurant before you get to manage them. And I've had a couple of them that said that was all fine and good. And then the first day or two, they're like, I, you want me to take, I just took out the trash. I have to do it again. And I'm like, yeah, you have to do it again. You have to be willing to do that. And they're like, no, nah, this isn't for me. And I'm like, you're absolutely right. This isn't for you. You know, it was nice knowing you, but I, you know, we'll help you find the next job. You've got to be humble and you've got to earn the respect of everybody there. And if you're not willing to do everything that we ask our employees to do, then you're not in the right place. And, you know, quite frankly, it's better to find that out earlier than later anyway. But most times that doesn't happen. Most times people know what they're kind of walking in for and getting ready to do. But that whole org chart thing is important to me, that they understand that the team members are the most important. And I always show them that and they kind of nod and go, yeah, you know, that looks nice. But the big thing is, is when they come in that we actually treat them that way and we follow through on it. And when push comes to shove, we do what we say we're going to do. Um, that's huge. You know, if you don't do that, then you're going to lose their respect. And rightfully so. I'd be the same way. Um, I mentioned earlier, I've got my notes here to the side, sorry. Uh, you know, we care for them, try to schedule around their needs. Um, we routinely check in with the employees to make sure that they're getting everything they need. I like to have what are called skip level meetings. And uh, that always makes my uh, managers a little nervous. And I'm like, well, I don't understand why. If you're doing what you're supposed to do, that shouldn't be an issue. But uh I like to have meetings directly with the shift leads or the team members and say, okay, how are your managers doing? Are they taking care of you? Give me some examples of what's going well and what's not going well. And again, I take notes. And uh, very shortly after that, I meet with the managers and I'm like, here are what your people have to say. And uh, how do you, you know, how do you feel about that? And it's good because I've, I've, I think I've managed to uh, gain the trust of the employees in that when they tell me things, I'm, I'm real careful that when I talk to the managers, they don't know which teammates said what, because obviously if there's any kind of retribution for that, they'd never tell me anything ever again. And I tell them that, I'm like, I realize this. And I'm pretty good at changing the names to protect the innocent and, uh, and all of that. But it works really well because um, they get honest feedback. A lot of people aren't willing to do that. You know, how is everything going? Oh, it's fine. It's fine. It's like, well, you know what fine means, right? Um, and they won't really tell you because they're afraid of retribution or they just don't want to cause a scene or they, they feel bad about it. They don't want to tell people to their face, but they'll tell me, you know, on the side if they feel like they can trust me that I'm not going to get them in trouble. And it's great because we get honest feedback that I can give to the managers. And some of it sometimes is a little hard to hear, but I think they, for the most part, appreciate that and uh, want the feedback and they want to do better. And sometimes if you don't know what you're doing wrong, you, you don't know and you can't fix it. So um, let's see, I had a question on here. It says, do you struggle to find employees who buy into the Chick-fil-A responsibility? I've found that finding the right team members who aren't just looking for a paycheck can be a challenge. Yes, uh, we do struggle with that. I can tell you, I probably do, we, we probably do about 10 interviews and get maybe two people out of those 10 that are the, the right people. And, uh, you know, people have come from different backgrounds that work for me. I, you know, from all the other restaurants that are out there, I have people from every restaurant that you can think of. And sometimes, you know, it takes a little while. When you interview them, you kind of have to look into their heart. And you got to ask more questions than just the basic, do you know how to do this or do you know how to do that? Um, you got to look into their heart and see, try to discern whether they have the capacity to be the type of person you want. They're not going to walk right in the door and be a Chick-fil-A employee. I almost never get that. Honestly, even Chick-fil-A employees that have worked for other Chick-fil-A's don't always kind of, you know, match up to what my expectations are for them. But if they have the heart for it and we think that we can get them there, then we'll hire them and we'll work with them and train them. But we'll be real honest with them and say, you know, this is going to be a challenge. And these are the kind of expectations we're going to have for you. And if you, if you can't meet these, you're, you're not going to make it. And you're not going to last. So we shouldn't even start. 
And so we try to, I don't try to scare them out of the job, but I do, you know, let them know what they're in for ahead of time because it's a waste of their time and mine if they're really, if their heart really isn't going to be in it. Uh, what we find though, a lot of times is they're simply not treated well at the other, haven't been treated well at the other places where they've worked. And when given the opportunity and are treated the right way, they blossom and turn into something that's incredible. You know, we've hired people where they said everything sounded good and we thought we had the right person. And then time, you know, over time we realized their heart's not in it and it just didn't work out and we had to let them go. But I'd say more often than not, we, it turns out that when we treat them the right way and show them love and care and actually do what we said we were going to do when we uh, interviewed them, they turned into incredible people. Uh, they had it in them all along and they just didn't realize it. Um, plus, they just, they're so grateful that they're in an environment now that, um, you know, that'll treat them that way, that they want to turn around and pay it back and pay it forward to other people. And that's generally how it works for us. Um, as I said, it doesn't always work, but a lot of times it does. So that was a great question. I appreciate that one. Um, you know, in terms of customer service, you know, another thing that I'm a big proponent of, let me check my time, make sure I'm doing it right here. Stop me, Shelby, if I'm going too long, by the way. I could probably talk about this stuff all day. But, uh, you know, if you don't measure it, you're not going to know how well you're doing. This is where the engineer inside of me kind of geeks out and likes those kind of things. We have uh, scores that come into the restaurant that are called uh, CEM or Customer Experience Monitor Scores. Uh, anybody that's gone through a Chick-fil-A, not every receipt, but I think they have it set up to do like every six or seven receipts has a survey on there. And, you know, most people probably look at it like I look at it like, hey, I don't have time for a survey. I don't want to do this. But they actually offer them like a free sandwich if they fill it out, which suddenly changes everything and people are willing to do it, which is great. Good score, bad score, you get the sandwich. Um, but those CEM scores come back and it measures us on, on things that we're doing in the restaurant, how uh, speed of service, how fast are we? Order accuracy, that's an important one. Did we get the order right and everything that they asked for? Was the taste good? Um, were the employees attentive and courteous? That's a big question that we want to know is were they courteous to you? Uh, were we clean? That kind of thing. And those scores come in and uh, we watch them all the time. I get e daily emails, weekly emails summarizing that. And it's kind of like, uh, you know, I think they ask us to be rated on a scale from one to five, five being the best. It's either five the best or one the best, I forget which, but it's sort of like you either hit a home run or you don't. If they give us a five, then that counts as a positive. If it's a four or below, then it's like, it might as well be zero, it doesn't matter. And so it's a percentage of people that would give us a five out of five in each of those categories. And uh, so we know, and we, want, we put those up on a board in our store and we talk about them. And if it falls below what we consider to be acceptable, then we have talks about it. We figure out what we've got to change. Is it, is it an individual person? We have a way of breaking the data down to see what time of day it happened, what people were on that shift, who we need to talk to. And it's important to, uh, to measure it and to put it up where everybody can see it. Um, you know, a scoreboard is so important. You know, if you were playing, a, I'm a sports fan. If I was playing a basketball game, but there was no scoreboard up there, we were just kind of trading baskets back and forth. I probably wouldn't play as hard as if I saw the score that was up there and saw, man, we're down by five. You know, I need to kick it into another gear. It's kind of the same way with these uh, CEM scores. By posting them up where my employees can see them, they're competitive. They want to do well. And what I like to do is I put our scores up there. And the way our system works, I can actually see the scores for the other Dayton uh, Chick-fil-A stores, as well as, you know, stores corporate-wide. I put down what the corporate-wide average is for a given metric. But we also, I like to put the Dayton market and Troy's Royce competitive. We want to be better than Benchwood. We want to be better than uh, uh, Centerville. We want to be better than Beaver Creek. And if we're not, we're going to do something about it and we're going to fix it. So uh, I think that's a huge thing is having that up to where the employees can see it and they know what the score is. And uh, we, you know, we reward it as well. Um, you know, we'll have pizza parties. We'll have uh, different things for employees. I might have gift cards for them or something like that. If we set a goal on one of those metrics and we meet it, I want to reward them. I don't want it to just be a negative, like, hey, we're falling below this and boy, we got to kick it in gear. I want it to be, wow, you know, we exceeded the goal by this much. Let's celebrate. And how do you guys want to celebrate? They've got a lot of great ideas on how to do that. Um, 
last couple things I had here for notes um, is one of the things that makes Chick-fil-A different is the owner. Um, Chick-fil-A's, they don't have a requirement for me that, hey, you have to be here every day and you have to work so many hours a week. They just know from the, the grueling interview process that I had to go through to be, you know, to have the right to become an owner, what kind of person you are. And what makes a Chick-fil-A a Chick-fil-A Chick is the owners there every day. Uh, you can, and there's some Chick-fil-A's where the owner's been there so long that maybe he doesn't show up, he or she doesn't show up there every day. And you can tell the difference between those Chick-fil-A's and the ones where the owner is there every day. And, uh, you know, like I said earlier, my job isn't to make sandwiches or run a register or do anything like that. I'll certainly jump in and do it. It's not beneath me and I'm happy to do it, even though I don't do it as well as my employees do. But my job is to be there every day and make sure the culture stays the way it is. And when I see an interaction or something not go quite the right way, that's when I pull the person aside and say, let's talk about this. What's going on with you? You know, the first question is always, is there something going wrong for you? Because it's not like you to behave that way or act that way and to catch it in the moment and to make sure all my managers are doing the same thing. That is huge. Um, having the owner there each and every day, um, participating, talking to everybody. You know, I make it a point. I've got 30 some people that are in the restaurant at a given time. And I make it a point, the first thing I do when I walk in is I walk through the restaurant and I say hello to every one of them individually and ask them how their day's going. And, you know, most of the times I get the polite answer and sometimes I get the look like, hey, I'm really busy right now. Could you just move on? And I'll move on. But I give them the chance too to tell me if something's not right and, uh, and be present. And I think that's huge and that's really important. Again, you'll get good customer service if you're treating your employees the right way. They'll want to treat your customers the right way. And I guess the last note I had written here was, um, I try to make uh, make our restaurant the place where people can be at their best every day. You know, it, it's it's expected, it's practiced all around them. And uh, oh, here's where I had that quote, rising water raises all ships. And uh, if most of the people get on board, you'll find that all the people get on board because they don't wanna be left behind. So anyway, that was sort of my presentation. Hope I covered a lot of it for you. Um, I'm open to any and all questions. I haven't seen any other chats come through. So you guys can ask me anything you want. It can be about customer service. It can be about, and as I said earlier, our dining room's not ready to open yet. We'll see over time. I'm anxious to do it, uh, but uh, there's some, some things that have to fall into place first before I'm able to do that. So what can I answer for y'all? You can unmute yourself, Ernie, if you want. I always, I always have a question. How do you use the, how do you get the rewards off the darn app? <laughs> how do you get the rewards on the app? <laughs> yeah, I always have a tough time with that. I'm like, uh, okay. <laughs> well, I, I can tell you that's the, the app. I'm technically, even though I'm an engineer, technology with the apps always kind of stymies me, but I've got several employees there that are good at it. I've had people too where um, you can go in after the fact with your receipt and put a receipt number in. Like if you didn't get your reward, if they forgot to you know click on whatever they need to click on while you're there, you can actually do it after the fact. Okay. Uh, to walk you through to do that though, my, one of my employees would be better at that. But feel free to ask one of them the next time you're there. They'll, they better stop down and take the time to show you how to do it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Ari's wondered though, but uh, yeah, <laughs> thanks. No problem. Um, Let's see here. I've got a couple of questions that came through on the chat. Um, make sure I'm not skipping over any here. Uh, what does your training manual look like? So what's funny is Chick-fil-A doesn't have a standard manual. I, I own the restaurant. It's not like some of the other uh, quick service restaurants where they're chains. We're, we are a chain, but where they have kind of like the standard owner's manual that they give to everybody. Uh, when I walk in there, these employees work for Doug Knostman. They don't work for Chick-fil-A. And I'm not, I had to create my own training manual. And what I did is I went to other rest, other Chick-fil-A restaurants, asked to look at theirs, observed what they were doing. And I sort of cobbled together the best, what I felt like were the best pieces from every one of the other restaurants. And over time, it, it's still continuing to evolve. I still continue to do that. So, um, but our training manual, you know, it's not real big. We, we try to do more hands-on training than anything else, uh, that kind of structure. Um, another question is, what are some of the different things you reward or incentivize your team members, um, i.e. Uh, survey, team member referrals? 
Yeah, we do that um, for employees. You know, we find that that's a great way to find employees. They want to work with their friends and they want to, they want to work with other employees that are good. And I always tell them that, you know what we're looking for people. So go out and find them and bring them in. And I will, I'll, uh, I'll incentivize them from a monetary standpoint. Um, I'll give them money for that. I'll put it in their next check um, for going out and finding people. We usually, I'll give them a certain amount um, if the employee, you know, is there and it makes it through like training or maybe six or eight weeks. But I also reward longevity. If that employee that they brought in was there uh, six months or more, then there'll be another uh, check coming their way for that. So I think that's an important way to do it. Um, so do you, how often do you meet with your team members? Are they one-on-ones? Great question. I, I think that's absolutely critical. Everybody wants feedback. They really do. And, and they want feedback that is tangible, not just going through the motions, answering a couple questions. Um, I meet with my manage, my top level managers, and there's seven of them. I meet with them weekly. I think that's important every week. And we talk about, you know, store performance, but honestly, the majority of our discussion is how's everybody in the restaurant doing? Are we training the way we need to? Have we cross-trained enough people? Are people being given opportunities that want to be given opportunities? Is anybody struggling? Uh, and that's a lot of times not just in the restaurant, but is anybody struggling personally? You know, with 100 employees, there is always, unfortunately, there's somebody going through a divorce. There's somebody whose children are sick. There's somebody that just lost, uh, you know, a loved one. Um, I want to know about that. And we, we talk about how we can care for them and take care of them and love on them. And that, honestly, that takes up more of our meeting than, hey, how's the store doing from a dollars and cents standpoint? Um, if I take care of my employees, it's amazing how the rest of that just sort of falls into place. And I don't have to worry about it as much. Um, my managers do do one-on-ones uh, with everybody in the restaurant. The goal is a minimum of doing a formal one twice a year, but we actually do it much more often than that. I'd say quarterly, we get through everybody where we sit down and just have a heart-to-heart, -heart, how are you doing? And I do uh, skip level meetings myself personally, probably about once every month or two with uh, you know the shift uh, members and then whatever team members want to come. So. We do it quite often, and I, it's important. Um, let's see here. Now the questions are popping in. Let's see here. Do you feel the need to have a higher starting pay in order to attract employees? Um, yeah, you know, you have to be competitive. I think, you know, I don't. I can't say that I know what uh, uh, other restaurants are paying employees, but people that come work for me will generally share kind of where they're at, and we do try to be a little bit above that. If I'm going to have the best people, I've got to pay them in a way that treats them as if they're the best people. And we do, I, I pay uh, for the most part base pay, but there are incentives for people too, if they meet certain goals. I think that's an important thing, especially for the shift leads and above. Um, they have to have a little bit of buy-in and giving them a little bit of an incentive helps there as well. Um, how often do you meet with the team members? We already talked about that. What is your policy with the senior staff that may be unhappy and the negativity is toxic to those, including patrons? You know, I try to give people grace. Um, my policy is I'll sit them down and try to talk about what's happening with them on a personal level that is causing them to behave that way. But, you know, if, they're, if they've been there for a while, then I know what they're capable of. And um, the question becomes, why are you not doing what you're capable of or behaving in the way it's capable? And we give them every opportunity to try to change it and fix it and, and, and move down the field and improve. If it gets to the point, though, where they're, they're simply not changing and they're not changing quick enough, then I have had to let people go before for that. I don't like doing it, but um, for the sake of the team, that's what you have to do. Um, I was just commenting on the inverted org chart that they like that. Um, how are you dealing with staffing issues during the growing pandemic without burning out your good employees? And how are you helping your employees with the stress of being shorthanded and sometimes overworked? So that's a great question. We've been actually fortunate enough. Um, you know, people ask, how do we get the good people that we have? I'll be honest with you. Um, I think it's through prayer. Um, I pray for it. Uh, I give all the credit to God. He brings us fabulous people and great people. And up to this point, We've never really been to where we're shorthanded and people are having to work ridiculous hours. As a matter of fact, I have a rule 
um, there's a maximum number of hours anybody is allowed to work in the restaurant because I really think a work-life balance is important and I don't want to, uh, I don't ever want to exceed that. Uh, my family is important to me and I know that my health is impacted and my ability to be a good owner is impacted if I'm not getting enough sleep or enough time with my family or enough balance in my life. So uh, I make sure my employees get it as well. I would rather shut something down. For instance, the dining room right now, there's a couple of reasons we haven't, we haven't opened it. And one of them is, is I don't have enough employees at the moment to handle that and do it. You know, hopefully the government will quit incentivizing people to stay home and not work. Uh, that's, that's the big struggle right now that everybody's feeling. Um, but until I have enough employees to open the dining room, I won't open it. Even if they lift all the mandates and I, we don't have to be the mask police anymore. Um, if I don't have enough employees to do it and pull it off the right way, I simply won't do it because I'm not going to overstress my employees. It's too important. Um, let's see here. Somebody worked for another, I'll just say another restaurant and couldn't agree more with the power of prayer. So thank you for that confirmation. Um, yeah, you know, I, I'd be remiss if I didn't give, uh, give credit for that. Um, there's times where I'm like, I just don't know how this is going to work or what's going to happen. There's times where I have a lot of doubt. And uh, when I go to prayer and uh, give it over to the Lord, it, he always takes care of it. And I have to give him credit for where we are today. That's, that's why we have the restaurant we have. That's why the people, I think, behave the way they do. Is um, Whether they personally have faith or not, um, I, I, I just I think, I think that's a big impact on us.